the grace of Jesus Christ, my brethren. Let us read today from the book of Zephaniah, the prophet Zephaniah, chapter 3. The prophet Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 1. Prophet Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 1. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted to the oppressing city. She has not obeyed his voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in the Lord. She has not drawn near to her God. Her princes in her midst are roaring lions. Her judges are eviling wolves that leave not a bone till morning. Her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. And we continue in verse 11. And that day you shall not be shamed for any of your deeds in which you transgress against me. For then I will take away from your midst those who rejoice in your pride. And you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. I will live, leave in your midst a meek and humble people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall, not, shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their, tongue, their mouth, for they shall feed their flocks and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart. O daughter of Jerusalem, the Lord has taken away your judgments. He has cast out your enemy. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. And that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God in your midst, the, mo the Mighty One, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly, who are among you, to whom its reproach is a burden. Behold, at that time I will deal with all who afflict you, and will save the lame, and gather those who were driven out. I will appoint them for praise and fame in every land where they were put to shame. At that time, I will bring you back, even at the time I will gather you. For I will give you fame and praise among all the peoples of the earth, when I return your captives before your eyes, says the Lord. It is for God to look over all the sons of men, and it is the truth that God observes carefully all men, all people, no matter where they are. And his intention is to bless them. To make them grow. To make them happy because God is love. And he wants his creation, man who is the most beautiful creation. He has, he want, he has the will and intention and good plans for him. But my dear brethren, the things that God sees many times grieve him. The Holy Spirit is grieved <coughs> with a great sorrow because he sees outside in the world fornication, uncleanness, adultery, lewdness, idolatry, covetousness, deceits, deceptions, and injustice, destructions. But Furthermore, turning his eyes and looking to his own people, the situation that he sees there even is not good. He sees a people that have rulers, that have authority like lions, but they are like, they are like evening wolves. They are attacking lions, they are roaring lions, they are aggressive. 
beasts. He has judges who ought to lead people to the righteousness of God. But they are wicked and, and thieves like wolves that work in the night. He has prophets that ought to prophesy in the name of the Lord to bring messages from God. Yet, they are people that are insolent and treacherous. They are hypocrites. And they work for themselves and for their own stomach. For their own benefit. And finally, there are priests who pollute the sanctuary of the Lord. They defile it with their abominations, with their idols, but also with their sins and personal sins and family sins. But God has a good plan. He has a good purpose. He has a kind intention. He sees all these things. He sees our mistakes. He sees our weaknesses. He sees the problems within which we live and how we respond to these things and how we stand in the presence of God. But God has good plans. God is love. But He has to act. He has to act in the way that He knows. He has, he has to clean out and separate and distinguish and clear out those who bring the scandals, those who bring problems. And he will do this. He has to take from within, take out from within those who boast in, in the greatness and the proud, no matter where they are. He has to take out from within the judges that judge deceitfully, the prophets who prophesy with pride, the rulers, princes who oppress and rule, because he loves his people, he loves his church. And finally, In the end, a small remnant will be left. But of the sorrowful, of the poor, and of the humble, this remnant will be. What matters, my dear brethren, is not how we are now. But what is our tomorrow, every one of us separately. Presently, some of us may feel like princes. They may feel strong. Charismatic, mighty, but this is not the crucial point here. The crucial point is the tomorrow that God is preparing. What will that be? Because the Bible says, rich have become poor and have starved. But to those who seek God, the Lord works. And the secret of God is that He is not searching to find mighty and strong and great and important people, educated and wealthy people. No, He's looking for people who are broken hearted. Because sorrow produces patience and patience produces approval. Approval works hope. So he's looking for broken hearted people, sorrowful people, poor, humble people, but who have one beautiful characteristic, they hope in Christ. Their hope must be Christ. Only with these people can he cooperate because only they expect from Christ everything. And very carefully, they stretch out their ears to discern what God has there to tell them. And they, 
And they don't go on with their own strength, their own wisdom, and their own ability and cleverness. But they open their ears, they open their heart. They pray, and they know how to humble themselves because they are humble. And they wonder, Lord, what do you want me to correct? Because what God saw in His people during that time was that they did not obey the voice of God. They heard it, but they didn't obey it. They did not accept correction. He rebuked them. He revealed their mistakes to them. But they were not able to humble themselves and say, say, I made a mistake, I am correcting myself now. It isn't easy, my dear brethren, for man to correct his mistake if he is not humble. Or rather, it's very difficult. I'll put it this way. No one is without mistakes. We all make mistakes. But we need someone to reveal our mistakes to us, to show us our mistakes. And we need a heart that is broken and a, heart and a spirit that is contrite so that we may accept our mistakes and correct them immediately. We need the grace of Christ which is given to the humble. But also Christ needs so that he may do his work which is to be glorified among people, to be glorified within the world. To find people who are poor and humble. But who have their hope in Christ. And when he finds them. There the great spiritual overturn takes place. There the last become first. And the first become last. And God and the life of everyone. And the families of everyone but especially in the church that he has added us, he often brings great spiritual uh, stirrups and he turns over things for his glory. <laughs> for that reason, my dear brother, brethren, because our tomorrow does not belong to us, let us not hope end today. Let us not support ourselves on today. The Apostle Paul, this great Apostle of the nations, has understood this thing very well, so he shouts, I forget the things of the past. And every moment I stretch my hands forward to the things that are ahead. And I run. I'm in a hurry. For the kingdom of heaven is in a hurry, and those who hasten grab it. I'm in a hurry and I run toward it. I forget of the things that are behind, the good and the bad. So that I may receive the prize of the upper calling. And God, within such a spirit that He wants to give to us, and He wants us to seek it, the spirit that is based not on today, neither on tomorrow, on yesterday, but a spirit that is based on tomorrow that belongs to Christ. Spirit of man that depends on Christ, that is. For that reason, do not rejoice for today. Don't rejoice at all. Do not be sad for today at all. But run toward tomorrow. And tomorrow is appointed clearly by God to the princes, to the judges and the prophets and the priests who do not obey the voice of the Lord and do not receive correction from Him. Judgment will come upon them. Affliction, pain, anxiety, darkness, and possibly if they do not make it in time to repent, death. But the tomorrow for the people who are the way that God wants them, who have understanding of the verse that says, we all stumble in many things. They have understood, they realize that God works 
with humble people and poor people, poor in the spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. With humble and poor people. These people then who seek the voice of God so they can obey it. And they seek the rebuke of God so that they may correct their lives. To these people God says, In that day that I will make intervention, there is strict there is intervention of strictness but there is also intervention of gentleness there is intervention of judgment and of blessing but there is also intervention of curse and affliction and trial but there is also intervention of judgment unto eternal life or eternal perdition at that moment will i will make an action because the time will come with all certainty, the time will come, and it won't be once, but repetitively. The Lord will bring earthquakes, spiritual earthquakes in your life. Because the shakable things have to fall, and only the unshakable to remain. And a man has built his life, on, if a man has built his life on shakable things, nothing will be left standing. But a person who hopes in the Lord and he is ready to obey the voice of the Lord and to correct himself in the rebuke of God then God tells him in that day you will no longer be ashamed of your deeds which you committed <coughs> because don't fear sin God sent Jesus Christ and he shed his blood so that he may clean you from all sin. Your proud spirit is what you must fear. Your hard heart you must fear and, and tremble. Stubbornness. Disobedience. But also lack of repentance. I in that day when I will visit you. Then you will no longer be ashamed for your iniquity because I will take away from your midst those who boast in your greatness and no one will be able to be proud against my holy mountain, in my holy mountain. And what will be left is a people that is meek and humble but people who trust in the Lord. And this people that is poor and humble and meek and hopes in the Lord shall no longer do unrighteousness, shall no longer speak lies, and it shall not have a deceitful tongue. But on the contrary, they shall enjoy in the presence of God. They will eat and, and lie down, and no one will be in their life to make them afraid. And this is very important, my dear brethren. This is the small detail that I want us to focus on. You won't fear anything. Because the perfect love of God will drive out all your fears. For that reason, sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, for the Lord has taken away your judgment and has cast out your enemy. Now the King of Israel is the Lord in your midst, and in the future you shall see no disaster. In your future, you will never see disaster again. In your future, you will no, see no evil. There will be no evil in your life any longer. That brings sorrow to you and reproach and affliction. As long as you have understood that God works with a humble and with a contrite and heart. He, he is glorified. Well, from there on, things will become new. They become new in our life. New for our family. New in the church. New in our surroundings. Because God says, forget the things of the past. I'm doing new things now. 
but new things unto blessing or things for affliction. No, we want new things unto blessing. And we know the way for this. And we know what the will of God is that is good and perfect and pleasing. Spirit of a humble person. A contrite heart that fears and trembles before the word of God. Let us be ready to obey when God speaks to us. And correct ourselves immediately when the Lord rebukes us. And then... God will be glorified in your life and in your family by making making us his name rejoiced and praised among the people among the nations when God sets free all captivity the Lord will be glorified my dear brethren today let us seek for Christ to be glorified in our life. This does not mean anything more or less than us seeing the Lord blessing all our brethren and His church. And this is His intention. This is His decision. This is His work. This is His will. Whoever you may be, whatever you may be, wherever you may be found, whatever is happening in the past, has happened in the past, He is able to bless you and, and heal you. He is able and He wants to change everything in your life. But two are the problems that hinder God from revealing His glory, His mercy and His grace. The first thing is, do you believe this? And the second thing is, do you obey? If you believe and obey the voice of God, you will enjoy all the good things that God has to offer. If you believe in the love of God and obey the voice of the Holy Spirit, then the sure thing is that you will enjoy the goods of God. God wants, and we want, but a covenant is required, an agreement is required here. An agreement that is sealed in the blood of Jesus on God's side. A personal negotiation is required and a personal agreement with God through Jesus Christ is needed. Christianity is not enthusiasm. Christianity is not rebellion. Christianity is not philosophy. It is not even a religion. Christianity is a personal relationship that God calls every one of us today especially saying come close to me because I am searching to find one person whose heart is perfect and he hopes only in Christ. God the Father says come close to me with a heart that hopes in Christ alone and I to you and with you will reveal my glory I will overturn everything I will do new things new things that a human mind cannot imagine the mind hasn't an eye hasn't seen the ear hasn't heard and have not risen in the heart of any man but by the Holy Spirit God reveals the things that are given to those who love Him. Personal invitation. Personal calling. Personal enlistment. 
if we believe this, and leaving here we do not forget it as we leave this place, but accept it in our heart, then God promises through his word that he will change everything. That is why he sent Christ. He will destroy the works of the devil. He will give life. He will raise up. And for that reason, God said the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. And finally, He will raise us up onto eternal life. Amen.